There's nothing quite like your first time playing a board game, you know? Yeah. Sticks in the mind in a yeah. way that you can't forget. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We are the Brothers Murph, and we're going to be talking about our top 10 gaming experiences in right. this one. A lot of those can tend to be first times, like you were kind of talking about our cold open. Those early bit. days of gaming where things kind of shifted next level yeah. for you or what have you. But these are these are things that we still think back fondly on this time. It's like yeah. these kind of like hallmark moments. Yeah, and again, like, and this is one of those lists where it's just like, it could be so many different things, right? We might end up doing another one because there's so many things that pop in our head. Like, oh, oh that gosh. was amazing, that was amazing. So this list, has an order, but not really. This is just top, this is 10 really amazing gaming experiences that we've had. Kind of helped shape kind our... of all different reasons too, you yeah. know? And so uh, we're really, really excited about it. Cause like, I just, it's just so fun to kind of reminisce about it. I think it's something that we all have. It's like, if you're in the, the hobby, you probably have certain moments that help make this yeah. hobby for you. So we're going to talk about those right now. So my number 10 or our number 10 is a time that we went on an overnight hike into Desolation Wilderness, which is in the Sierra Nevada mountains right here in the greatest state ever created, California, baby. And we uh, hiked up into Desolation Wilderness to a lake called Ralston Lake. And uh, it was just a really fun hike. Uh, and we brought along paperback because it was small enough to throw into a into a, a hiking pack, and I could accept the amount of weight that you know a box of cards, all of the packed cards, uh, would add on to uh, what I was carrying in. And we ended up uh, taking the day to hike in, made dinner, relaxed, and then set up our, our kind of sleep situation, and just played paperback right there on the ground in nature as the sun was kind of setting. It was just a beautiful time to be alive. You know what I mean? It was just one of those times where. You know, you're away from screens, you're truly disconnected from uh, the internet and connected to nature, playing a board game. Uh, it was just one of those beautiful, perfect moments. So paperback is our number 10, specifically hiking it in through a day of hiking after dinner, sitting down to play a board game. It doesn't get much better than that. eight is me playing a roller ride called Hex Roller Wall at work. I used to work for this event company where we would put on like team building events with other companies. It was actually pretty fun. We'd play like little games and stuff. It was, it was kind of all over the place, but I would always bring games to these events. These events usually were there like all day, but a lot of times we'd like set up everything, but sometimes there was a decent amount of like waiting around. So I'd always bring like small little roller rides, little party games, just in case maybe someone wanted to play. You know, we're all gamers. We do that. We're like, I'm gonna bring a game just in case, you know, what if you know, what if here at the DMV, maybe someone wants to start up a game of Catan, <laughs> you know, or something. And so I always bring games. I never really got a chance to play them, but one time we did. We had time. We were down in Anaheim. We were there all day and we were just waiting around for a couple hours. And so I was like, hey, I got this little game called Hex Roller. Y'all want to play it? And there's a woman there named Jill who I absolutely adore. And she had never played like any kind of like board game, modern game at all. So I explained Hex Roller, which is a rolling route where you're kind of like basically you're rolling out dice and you're just putting lines of numbers. It's a fine game, but it's a little roll ride, so we've kept it. And she was so hyped about this game because she was just, she'd never played like a modern board game. So she was just like, this is amazing. Like, oh my gosh. And she kept saying over and over and over again, this is the greatest game ever made. And so we'd be in the middle of playing something and she'd be like, this is the greatest game ever made. And she was just so sorry. I probably just blew all over the mic. She is so excited about playing this game of Hex Roller. And Hex Roller is not the greatest game ever made. It's fine. It's a good little roller, right? But it's not like, I was just like, man, I'm going to blow your mind with other games if you think this is the greatest game ever made. But it was just so much fun. It was so wholesome to see someone so excited and being really shown a world they've never seen before. And it was just really exciting. And that that time is always stuck in my heart, hardcore, because like, it just, I don't know. Jill that day was just so, so excited. This is the greatest game ever played. It was amazing. So number eight is a time that we got to play High Society with Crystal Dax and Z Garcia uh, from the Dice Tower. And this was at MeepleCon, which now is Dice Tower West, but prior to that, it was called MeepleCon in Las Vegas. And uh, it was our first ever board game convention. Like it hadn't been uh, to a, a thing. And uh, we got a chance to play High Society 
and had a blast. Uh, it's this auctioning game where you're trying to live the most kind of fancy life you possibly can, but uh, you don't want to spend all of your money because if you spend the most money, then you're out of the game. And we just had a great time egging each other on. We were putting on silly French accents and just trying to be, you know, very fancy people. And so it was just, it was late in the night and we were all kind of tired and stuff. And it was a perfect game to play in that moment. It's one that's like stuck out so fondly in my memory and <laughs> Crystal Z and Nick and I all remember that experience. So it was truly one of those great moments of coming together with people uh, and sharing a board game. So high society, late at night, just giggling over pretty much how bad we all, all were at the game. It's just too great. That's why it's number eight. Armor 6 was a really big game of the original, the OG zombie side. We got this game. This is before we started doing board game content. We were just playing games. We only had a couple games and zombie side was one of them. And in zombie side, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios. There's like nine double sided like map tiles that all go into different configurations depending on the scenario you're doing. But one of the cool things about zombie side is you can just make up your own scenario. Like a lot of dungeon crawlers, those kind of modular boards, you can kind of make up your own. And there was, there probably still is, but Simon used to have a whole like area on their website where people could like basically submit new scenarios. And there were like hundreds of them. There were so many, it was really, really cool. And so I was like, I'm gonna make one. And so we made one with, with Zombie Side, and it was just like this absolute nightmare of a scenario in terms where like, you had to like go over here to get this key to unlock this door over here. And then you had to go over here, unlock this door. And inside that room was the key to unlock this door over here. And it was basically a lot of this back and forth, back and forth. And in between that was just constant spawns of zombies. And so we got to the point where we were like so crazy hardcore. We're just like mowing down like 50 zombies a turn. But I made this scenario in the way where we kept having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it took us like eight hours to beat this scenario. It was such a long game, but Mike and I, we were just like playing on the floor because I had this big old map. And we were just like playing on the floor for like eight hours and it was so much fun. And it was just like not a good scenario at all, but it was just so cool. And it was in the beginning of us kind of playing games a lot and, and really kind of really discovering the hobby and that ultimately led us here, right? And so it was just really, really cool. That giant, not good game of Zombie Side was one of my favorite board game experiences because it was just so fun and so silly and so ridiculous. And it was just, it was really cool. So that big old game of Zombie Side is our number six. So number six is the first time that we were on game night, which we uh, played uh, with Rusty and Nikki and Lincoln. We played some now boarding, uh, which is a really fun real time cooperative game where you are trying to basically get people on planes and to the place that they are trying to go and trying to communicate and say, you know, say out of each other's way as you're going across the United States. Uh, it's probably as complicated or even more so than actual flight traveling, planning uh, air routes and things like that. We had so much fun and this was our first time meeting Lincoln uh, and Nikki in, you know, going to the set to play the game and it, it set off what we didn't know at the time is a set in motion several events that would lead to us making this very video for Board Game Geek right now. So that is something that like thinking back on, I'm like, wow, what an amazing night that was. We had so much fun, so much fun at the time, and then it's proved to be such an important moment in our life. So of course it has to be out there in the top gaming experiences, like, wow, that like helped us have a career. So thank you uh, to Board Game Geek for uh, taking a chance on a couple of kids and letting us say, come on down and play a game with y'all. Check out that episode of Game Night because we had so much fun. It was a hoot, now boarding, but that's our number six. Our number five was playing through Pandemic Legacy. I feel like this is, Legacy games in general are a lot of people's favorite gaming experience. We actually played through Pandemic Legacy season one, then season zero, then season two. And we actually did all three of them live on Twitch. Uh, not all in one city, but we did all of Pandemic Legacy one in one sitting on Twitch. It took about 16 hours. Then we did season zero the same way, all on Twitch, about 16 hours, and then season two. And we do these kind of challenges a lot, right? So we did our, we played through all of Gloomhaven in a week. We played through our entire collection in a week. We do these kind of challenges a lot. And I will say playing Gloomhaven in a week 
we enjoy doing those kind of challenges, but it's not like a good way to play the game. Like, don't do that. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's fun for the challenge aspect for us, but don't do that. But I honestly think playing Pandemic Legacy all in one sitting like that, or maybe breaking it up over like a weekend, where you're playing like six, eight hours a day, next day you play six, eight hours a day, I honestly think that's a great way to play it because you're just always immersed and you never break. That's one thing about the legacy games, which is tough, is if you have long breaks in between sessions, it kind of takes away from the experience, in my opinion. I wanna be able to play it and really stay locked in there. And I think playing it all in one sitting kind of works in a weird way. And if you especially played it over the weekend, I think that would be really, really a good, the best way to do it, in my personal opinion. And so us playing those three Pandemic Legacies was so much fun. And doing it live was so much fun because so many people in the audience knew what was coming, but we didn't because we hadn't played them yet. And so it was just the twists were so much fun. If I had to pick one, I like Pandemic Legacy 2, probably the most of the three. So that's probably my favorite of the three experiences. But really all three of those Pandemic Legacy are some of the best gaming experience I've ever had. I'm just playing games we really, really enjoyed. Playing Legacy games, playing it in this kind of big, crazy one sitting Having the audience there was just so much fun and, and playing the Pandemic Legacy is one of my favorite gaming experiences ever. But if I had to choose one, I'll say Pandemic Legacy Season Zero, which is the one we ended on because I just really liked that game. Um, it was my favorite of the three. And so, yeah, so that's our number five is playing through Pandemic Legacy in one sitting. So number four is the first time I played Captain Sonar. So this was a, uh, is a, real time eight player, you can play up to eight player and it really is best at eight player game of like battleship where you're on a submarine and you're moving around and you're trying to track down where the other person's uh, submarine is and trying to ultimately sink them. Uh, it's really fun because in this game, you'll be on a crew of up to four people and you all have a different specific job that you need to do. You know, certain people are trying to fix problems on uh, the, the sub. The captain is telling directions that we need to go. There's a person listening in to uh, the other submarine to try to figure out where they are. Uh, and someone's readying your weapons and things like that. And so this is such a fun game because it's all real time and it's just kind of chaos. You really have to like dial in and focus and listen to your team and stuff. And so the first ever game I played this, I was a captain and I was just like severely nervous because I'm like, oh man, this is my crew right here. I got to make sure I do this well. And we ended up winning and I just got into a, a rhythm with it where I was calling out and I felt like I saw the universe for a moment. And it was so fun. And the cool thing about it was, it was Nick and I playing with six other strangers. We had no idea who any of these people were. And we all came together and just, it clicked in a perfect gaming experience. And that's what I love about this hobby. And especially if you're at a board game convention with welcoming type folks, amazing things can happen. And none of us needed to know who the other one was to have that great time because we all had something in common. That was a love of board games. So that play of Captain Sonar was epic. I don't know how to top it. I'm like, that was just the coolest thing ever. It will always be such a fond memory. Uh, that first play of Captain Sonar, man, what a great time that was. It was epic. Number three is kind of a weird story where we were in London. Um, we were with in London with our good friend, Matthew Jude, who lives in the UK and with um, our good friend, Paula Deming, and then Mike's um, now wife, Karen. And we were all there, we were going to Aircon and then we were kind of hanging out in the UK afterwards. But the thing is this happened right when COVID hit. Like when we got there, this thing called COVID was kind of like, oh yeah, it kind of made it to Europe. That's, this is probably not a good thing. And then we went to Aircon. So we started in London and we ended our trip in London because that's where we were flying in and out of. And that week in between the two London trips, it was like, like when we got back to London, it was essentially a ghost town because everyone was inside. Everyone was quarantining. Everyone was terrified because COVID terrifying, right? And so it was crazy, the two differences. So when the, best one of the best experiences we ever had gaming was actually our second trip back to london which i know sounds really really weird but trust me it makes sense because we kind of couldn't really do anything nothing was open the only places we can go to like were like parks but we were all friends hanging out we hadn't seen each other in a long time and we were traveling when we were overseas and it was really special to us and so what we ended up doing was we had just gotten the crew because the crew was new at that point we'd gotten it at aircon and we just sat like in our hotel lobby and played the crew for hours because we, we couldn't do anything else. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't, there's nothing else to do. Like I said, the town was kind of like a ghost town. It was weird, eerie, but playing 
and just sitting in that lobby playing the crew over and over and over and over again for hours and hours and like ordering like Chinese food, eating that there, and then just sitting there having fun, just laughing, having such a good time. And it was kind of beautiful that like we were kind of forced into this situation where we couldn't really do anything else. And we just had to like hang out and be like, hey, you wanna play a game? We just sat there and played the crew over and over and over again. And it was just it was just really special and and it was it was nice to be there with people we cared about during a pretty scary time where we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to get back because all the airports were shutting down and stuff it was it was a really stressful time but that game and and those people really just i don't know made it all wonderful and so that's one of our favorite gaming memories even though it's kind of a weird scary sad one but it just i don't know it was, it was kind of beautiful in its own way and so we really really enjoyed it and um playing the crew for hours and hours with our, our some of our best friends uh, was really, really cool. And that's our number three. So our number two uh, has to do with us traveling. We do travel a lot for this job. We're getting back to traveling now. And so that means that we are on a certain amount of planes. And what do we like to do on planes? We'll play board games, of course. And typically that means you play a small roll and ride or something that's sort of, contained but one time we were flying all the way across the country so we had a bit of time on our hands and we were on a not full flight and so nick and i were in the very back of the plane we were seated uh you know one on the window one on the aisle and there was no one between us and so we saw we thought let's take the opportunity right now to play a slightly bigger game so we decided to play viticulture with tuscany on a plane and we folded down all three of the, the the tray tables and we used the middle table between us as a place to have bits and things like that. And we managed to play a full game of, of Viticulture with Tuscany on a flight. And we uh, <laughs> were just in the back with the crew hanging out and they were very interested in what we were doing. And they were like, what's going on here? And it was a cool moment. So we was talking about, well, hey, there's just things called board games. It's not just Monopoly anymore. You'd be amazed. And look at all this stuff. We're making wine. This is really cool. And it was just really fun because everyone in the back of the plane was like, these dudes are nuts. <laughs> but we're like, let's go for it and see if it can be done. And the logistics of figuring out exactly how to play was a fun puzzle in itself. And we managed to do it. I, I don't think you can do it on most flights, especially if it's a full flight, that'd be very inconsiderate of the person in between you. But if you have a moment where you can spread out a little bit, give it a whirl, see what kind of giant game you can play on a plane. Uh, and so we just had a lot of fun trying to make that happen. So it'll always make me laugh playing Viticulture on a plane. Our number one kind of started the whole thing. And it's kind of, you know, sappy to put this one, but it's true. And this is kind of our, our first game of Pandemic Legacy. I was introduced to modern board games by a girl I was dating back where we grew up, which is in Sacramento. And her family were big, big gamers. And so like her dad, to this day is in a D&D campaign that I think at this point has been going on for like 25 years. Like they're playing like the third descendants of their original characters, like, hardcore gaming family. And I hadn't really played any board games at all. And they're the ones who introduced us to modern board games and specifically introduced us to Pandemic. So my favorite gaming experience is the night we played Pandemic for the first time, it was New Year's Eve. And we were over at her house for New Year's, Mike and I and a friend. And they were like, hey, let's play this game. And they had really like tricked out their copy of Pandemic. They had like all the stuff was like in little pill bottles and stuff. And it was just like, not only had we not played a modern board game, the fact that they were so enthusiastic and they'd even like kind of tricked out their version of this game, it was just, I mean, it led us to here. That was the game that got us into board games. That was the the night that kind of started us down this thing. And now this is what we do, right? We're over here on Board Game Geek, it's awesome. So there's so many sentimental reasons for this, but it was just like in the moment, the experience itself was just so like, I didn't know things like this existed and it was so cool. And the family, the family is really awesome. And it was just so much fun. And it kind of led us here, so how could it not be our number one? Our number one gaming experience is playing Pandemic for the first time on New Year's Eve, playing it and like, and the ball drops, yay! Okay, back to Pandemic. And it was it was just really, really cool. Um, so that's our number one is playing Pandemic on New Year's for the very first time. And that led us here. So yeah, that's it. So that was our top 10 gaming experiences, at least for right now, because let's be honest, it we're could, making this new could be moments different. and memories all the time. Every single day. Now down in the comments, let us know what was like one of your favorite gaming experiences. Could be a giant, huge event. Could just be like you hanging out with a friend, playing a game, 
whatever it is, let us know down in the comments below because I, just, I don't know, I think we all have these and I think it's it's cool to talk about. Yeah, you know? I'd love to hear like what for you are things that you hang on to and think back fondly on because that's something that I think this hobby provides for all of us is experiences. It often comes down to the people you're playing with. We want to know all those in the comments like Nick said. Yeah, and until next time, I'm Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murph and we'll see you later. See you in the next top 10.